Okay, this is a project we're going to do today for Valentine's Day. It's a CNC pocket cut into a piece of alder. It'll just stand up. You could laser engrave some initials in there. Um, and then inside that pocket, I melted candles in it. So stay tuned for this video, and uh, I'll show you how to, to go ahead and do this project. Looks like a super cool Valentine's Day project. And subscribe if you like it. Make sure you comment. came up with the most brilliant idea there Stands is. or something like shapes that can stand up on their own like hearts or circles or parallelograms, anything. And we can have them write their own message. They can choose their own wood and then they write their message, four words, 25 letters. We can change that up. And then once it's carved in, we can use, um, they can choose their colors and then they can melt crayons into the engraving. So that way um, it looks really nice. And okay, here I am in Mastercam. I'm doing my crayon part project. A um, couple of things I want to show you. The first thing is, I won't go over how I created this geometry, but to create geometry, I do it under create. And I always create half a thing like this, draw a line down the center and then reflect it. It is very important that you have your um, Techno Servo router, the correct tool set. And that comes from machine type, router, Techno Servo, RMD. Okay. Once you have your tool figured out, then you go to stock setup. The stock is going to be 10 inches in X, I think six inches in Y, three quarter inch thick plywood. I'm going to start my cutter in the top center. If I want to see what the wood looks like, I hit display and then the green check mark. So I can see this is filling that up pretty well. Um, my cutter is going to start in the center. Out of a little bit of room down here, so I'm going to move this object up. Then now I'm going to toolpath it. This is going to be a pocket. So I hit toolpath, pocket. I'll name it heart. There's only going to be one toolpath. I'm going to select it with the contour. That yellow line goes all the way around. And that yellow line goes all the way around. I'm going to use a quarter inch flat end mill for this. It is a pocket and I'm going to go really shallow. So I'm going to go at a fast feed rate and plunge rate only because I'm going so shallow. Usually I'd set this more like 100 and this is 50. I work my way down here, holder no changes, cut parameters, those are good parameters. I do want to finish it, that'll clean it up. Lead in, lead outs turned off because it's a pocket. Depth of cut, I always set this as a safety. I'm gonna set it at 0.15. I'm not actually gonna use this feature but I just do it as a safety breakthrough and then linking parameters. These are all absolute. And this is my overall depth of cut in a negative value because the top of stock is set at zero. So I think I'll go negative 0.14 because I'm going under one five, it'll do it in a single pass. And there it is. That's how it's going to run it. If I want to check the tool path. I hit verify. I like to verify an isometric view. It's a quarter inch bit starting in the center top. Hit play. That looks like the pocket I want to cut out. So that looks good. I always save my file. So I go file, save as. Um, and I'm going to, my naming convention here is usually my stock. So 10 X six X by Y. Um, Part Q, this is the second one I'm doing, and I'll hit save. That is unrelated to posting it to the flash drive. Now that I've saved it, I go up to G1 here, and I hit post. It needs to be a techno step, green check mark. I'm going to post it onto the USB. I'm going to call it 10 by 6 pocket Schwartz, so I like that. I already have something on there, but I'm going to replace it. Now what's happening is taking all of that vector information, all those paths of travel, and it's converting it, and it's converting it into Cartesian coordinates or G code. So this is the actual code that runs on the computer. 
these are coordinates it's traveling through. You can see how many lines of code it is, about a thousand lines of code. Uh, these are the things it's telling what to do. Um, so the G's are the actual directions. And then this is a G1 travel down in the Z direction, a 0.14 at a feed rate of 100. So there's my plunge at 100. This is travel to the coordinate X 0.026 at a horizontal feed rate of 200. That's set, then travel to these coordinates and so forth. So my file is actually saved on my student folder. However, the G code, the actual lines of programming are saved on that flash drive. And then I'm gonna take that out into the wood shop uh, and run it on the CNC. So that's what we'll do next. I plug my flash drive in. I'm on the screen right here. I wanna go file, I wanna open. It's on the E drive. Go to the E drive. There's my file, okay. Pre-process right there is loaded. I want to preview it. There it is. That all looks right. Uh, and it's a 53 second runtime. So that's good. I'm going to hit start once I zero it out. It's imperative you zero it first. So here's the CNC. Um, here's the board I'm going to cut it on. I'm actually going to do a piece of hardwood. I put my square down. If you haven't seen this before, these are Raptor nails. This is the coolest thing ever for CNC. I have some videos on these nail guns. They are the best. They shoot these plastic nails. The nails are from Raptor. I love these things. So if you make a mistake and run into them, they're plastic, so it's no problem. So I take this nail gun. Uh, I just shoot the corner first. There's a plastic nail to hold down. And then I have one nail in and I pivot off of that nail to make sure I'm on square on my tabletop and then I'll shoot my other corners. This is really one of the best ideas that have affected CNC for me. Okay, now that I've done that, I'm gonna draw crosshairs from corner to corner and corner to corner to find the center of the board. Right there, I'm perfectly centered on the board. I go back up here and I hit zero all. So now my coordinates are zero, zero, zero. So that's perfect. I pre-processed it, I previewed it. I think we're ready to go. Turn the vac on and hit start. out of it always Z first and then Y back there. that's how easy it is to pop them off I'm gonna sand that a little bit and then drop the crayons in there this is a Harbor Freight heat gun um, this thing works great really inexpensive at Harbor Freight my Crayola crayons right there I'm gonna cut the paper off of these with an exacto knife then I'm just going to break them and put them in the groove there and hit them with the gun. So I just have some crayons dropped in there. See what happens. Just down with the chocolate. I don't want it to stay. Whoops. Well, I certainly don't want to come up over the top. So I'm going to use it too much. So. Really careful with the heat gun. We don't start any fires. Bring it back to a little more level. Gonna start spilling out of this side here. I think that'll all scrape. I don't want to plane it, but I think, you know, in the drum sander, well, we'll try it with the orbital first. We'll let it cool and see what happens next. Put a polyurethane spray on, exterior spray. 
curious to see how it seals up the wax. Uh, I'm sure it's shiny on there. Uh, I'm going to let it dry a little bit and put another coat on it. I'll trim that board up. If you want, you can laser engrave in the center of that heart too if you want. Cool project.